Web systems. Cool. Here we go. I'll nail it. Showtime! <laughs> Who will smoke the competition? Ready? Go! A whip? Uh. Oh, I think you're doing terrible. What are you doing? Uh. Hey! hey! Attack one is coming up. You better hurry. Time extended. Wow!
Well, well, look who's back. You won't get away this time. Dennis, get him!
August 5th, 2219, Third Fleet, Earth Orbit.
There's something new coming down in the 98 lineup of sports titles from the PlayStation Athletic Department. It's a whole new level of graphics and gameplay never before seen on PlayStation or any other video game system. What are the games like? Who's creating them? We're taking you inside to find out. The first thing you notice is that the biggest influence on the games are the pros themselves. They're kept pretty busy in the motion capture studio. We get a guy like a Chad Brown, a Lamont Warren, a Jerome Bettis, a Steve Bono, a Tim Brown. We get them down here and we pick their brains. Yeah, we get them in the motion capture studio and then we spend hours going over plays and individual player movements. You're going to find linebackers scraping in our game. You won't find it in other people's games. Why? They don't even know what it's about. The second biggest influence at the PlayStation Athletic Department is the sports expertise of the developers themselves. We're all sports fanatics here. We're not just programmers and artists putting a sports game together. Ex-college players or ex-pro players actually develop the games. The uh, developer for MLB 98 played professional baseball for the Minnesota Twins, Chris Cutliff. What? What? Kelly Ryan and myself played Division I college football. Our lead hockey programmer is actually a hockey player, plays twice a week. It makes a big difference when you have someone that understands the game and can implement little nuances into the video game itself. The result is a first in sports video games. What's new in technology is all new polygonal graphics across the entire lineup. It really sets a new level of video game realism. The NFL Game Day 98 is the only polygonal football game on PlayStation. NFL Game Day 97, it was a sprite-based game. One animation would have basically five or six frames of animation. It looks very flat. Now with polygonal graphics, you actually have a 3D model of a player that has depth to him. You can have up to like 30 frames of animation. You get a very seamless and realistic human-like movement. If you're a face-off fan, the first impression you're going to have is how good the game looks. We're going to have tons of animation compared to our sprite-based game in the 97 version. Um, last year we had about 60, 70 animations. We're going to have four or five times that. We'll have secondary animations for the first time ever in a hockey game. You'll see a goalie, for instance, go down into a butterfly save, and if he doesn't have time to get back up, he'll go in right to a right-hand glove save, which has never been accomplished before. In Game Day 98, you can rock people. We give you the tools that football players have on the football field. So if you're a defensive lineman, in Game Day 98, you're swimming, just like they do in the NFL. If a receiver's coming off the line, you're the DB, <laughs> clock him. You'll find full polygon action and faster gameplay in NBA Shootout 98, MLB 98, and NCAA Game Breaker 98 as well. And joining the lineup is our newest title, Kart World Series. It's more vivid than ever to travel at 200 miles an hour. Toward the end of our visit, it became apparent that developing sports games is a game itself, a high-stakes competitive push to put the most realism on screen. PlayStation Athletic Department is the leader. We're on the cutting edge of not only graphics, but gameplay. Over the past couple years, we've implemented gameplay features like swim moves in a football game, forearm shivers, one-handed catches, total control passing, the first time you could lead or underthrow receivers. Icon passing, the first innovative passing mechanism that we implemented in NBA Shootout 97. These up the level of gameplay experience. And, and you can see it, even our competition has seen to what level we've gone to in terms of gameplay, and now they're all mimicking us. We found developers here fanatical about pushing for more advances. And the harder they play, the more you win. Welcome to Apocalypse, a hot new game from Activision oh, yeah. that is the first to texture map a real person's face onto a CG model's body. Welcome to paradise, kid. And that face belongs to action movie star Bruce Willis. Time to get jacked up for Armageddon. Bruce Willis stars as Trey Kincaid, your virtual partner in the Apocalypse adventure. Motion capture technology was used to fully integrate Bruce into the game. Apocalypse is set in a dark and violent future where science and religion are competing forces of society. You can run, but you can't hide! A false prophet called the Reverend has called up the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Death, war, 
Beast, and Plague, played by the rock singer Poe. These four forces of destruction roam the Earth in human disguise and await a signal to obliterate humanity altogether. Your job is to keep this from happening, and your number one asset is Trey Kincaid. <laughs> Of course, saving the world has never been an easy job. In order to make you feel completely absorbed into the world of Apocalypse, new techniques were used to heighten the game playing experience. By taking a motion capture approach, Bruce's actions were digitized and could be manipulated for a variety of moves. Dynamic or intelligent camera technology adjusts the camera to the best angle for the current play. Bruce's input in every step of the process has also added a considerable amount to the game. A high priority when creating the game was to make sure the shooting worked within each scene. You can see exactly how all this attention to detail paid off. One thing is for certain, enter the world of Apocalypse and you'll never want to leave. Apocalypse by Activision. The most significant difference to us was capacity. Before, we were given restrictions in capacity, so we had to create one basic model and fiddle around with it, making players believe there were variations. It was a good way to become resourceful in limited circumstances. But on the CD-ROM, that restriction was completely taken away, and we didn't have to worry about various ways of modifying one basic model. If we needed 100 models, we could create each of them from scratch. The basic concept you have when creating RPGs is to imitate the real world and create a fictional world within the game. We have followed that concept in previous versions of this series, but technically, we had to use one basic model in different ways, or use a world symbolized specifically for game use. Now it is much easier for us to achieve our original goal. We can now express more of the real world in the game. The number of simultaneous music output channels used to be 8 in the Super NES. Now it's 24. We leave 8 of them open for sound effects, so we have 16 to use for the actual music. That adds a lot of richness to the music. For example, when you hit the piano keys with both of your hands, you get 10 notes at once, and you won't be able to create that kind of a sound on Super NES. Suppose we create that piano type sound with 10 notes and you still have 6 notes left. This means you can fit in sounds of other instruments and this certainly adds complexity to the game. We were able to use two types of CG technology in this game. One is the movie technology, where you create motion pictures using CG software and store it on CD-ROM. The other is polygon-based technology, where you create 3D objects and make them move. It is amazing to see new images being generated one after another, and all being played smoothly on the game console. You realize how powerful current technology is. Thanks to CD-ROM, cinematic expressions which were impossible in the past have become available. For example, we can now show close-ups on characters' faces, and using various camera angles, the game screen is no longer a stage-like space. However, movies can be seen in movie theaters. In order to make this thing attractive to game players, 
We tried hard to put playable elements in the scenario. We made it so players will not have to follow our pace. In previous games, there were big differences between ordinary scenes and special effects scenes, and they were arranged in a certain order. The players would accept that as an established style and take for granted characters going through monotonous map scenes and then special effects being used in highlight scenes. They understood it as the grammar of the games, especially RPGs. We tried to break that understanding. For example, even in map scenes, the characters won't just move horizontally, but special, sometimes thrilling effects are added. In highlight scenes, we didn't make it too elaborate so that it will excessively stand out from the other scenes. The players will enjoy the flow of the game from the beginning through the ending, without noticing any intervals or arranged orders. In battle scenes, we use a lot of camera angles and effects, paying attention to space and 3D. Therefore, the battle scenes become the highlight scenes. The 3D effect is best shown when you use summon beasts. These have always been the most attractive scenes in games, but we had to struggle on how to show them effectively in 2D atmospheres. Now, using 3D technology, more broad effects have been accomplished. The music in the field scenes, which is where the character walks around, has a unique flavor that no other RPGs had in the past. We intentionally eliminated the up-tempo, inspiring, rousing type of feel, meant to encourage you to embark on a journey that usual RPGs had. Instead, some parts of the music will rise melodiously, some parts will make you feel insecure, therefore creating various expressions within the same field of music. I assume players will get a different feel from it compared to previous RPGs. To tell the truth, I hope so, since this is my own experiment.